Hello, my name is Teham Saud, and I am a first year dental student at the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health. The reason I decided to make this YouTube channel was to document my experience going through dental school and to be a source of information and guidance for any pre-dental students. So without further ado, welcome to the first One Mission DMD video on applying to dental school. Now, when it comes to applying to dental school, there's a lot of elements that go into the application. So in this video, I will be tackling all of those elements and giving my personal experiences and recommendations in terms of what to do to have the strongest application possible. I know there's a lot of people probably watching this video from different backgrounds and a different time and place with everything. Some people may be in high school, some people may be in undergrad, so I'm gonna try to tackle all of them. If you're in high school, I would recommend two things. The first would be to keep on track with everything to start college on time, to finish your SATs, your ACTs, and to just stay on top of all your classes. If you are just about to start undergrad or you just started in the fall of 2019, then what I would recommend is to look into the requirements and the prerequisites for applying to dental school. Universally across the board, most of the dental schools across the country require these four courses. They require a year of biology with labs. They also require a year of general chemistry with labs, organic chemistry with labs, and physics with labs. So outside of these four, there's additional schools that require additional prerequisite courses, some of which include biochemistry, microbiology, human physiology, and anatomy. So it's up to the students once they start college to research these schools and to know ahead of time what classes they need to include into their undergraduate career to be able to have that application that schools will even be willing to look at. Because if you're applying to schools and you notice that, oh, I applied, but I didn't take human physiology, then your application won't be complete for that school. So you wanna make sure that you have a very organized checklist whether it be an Excel sheet, you can write it down and just keep on track with everything. So what I did actually while I was an undergrad at University of Houston, I wrote down the list of all the courses that I needed to have for any school that I wanted to apply to. And since I was a business major, I also had to keep track of all my business classes. So I made a huge list of business classes and then a huge list of science classes and then just organized them for the semesters that I would be in undergrad and kind of see how would be the best way to do it. And while you're in the beginning of your undergrad, what I would highly, highly advise any student would be to obviously stay on top of everything, be do well in all of your exams, do well in your classes, etc., etc. But one thing people forget usually and overlook is to maintain a strong relationship with your professors. And this goes into another element of the application, which is letters of recommendation. Um, you definitely want to have a good relationship with the professors that you have for your science courses and any other courses obviously but the sciences specifically because the dental schools require across the board a minimum of one science professor a lot of schools require two science professors and some may require three so this also goes into the planning what matters is our plan and knowing what schools require what so just to be safe, what I did is I just got three letters of recommendations from science professors. And then I got additional ones from dentists and I got one from a physician. So one thing that I could recommend to be able to accomplish this would be after you take an exam in a class in undergrad, go back to the professor with the exam and just go over the questions you missed. Explain that, oh, I thought it was like this, but why is it like this? You know, just opening a conversation. Once you do that, it'll open the door to even further conversations outside of the test. You'll get to know about the professor. You'll get to know how long they've been teaching. They might ask you questions in terms of what are your plans after undergrad. This is a great time to tell them that you're interested in applying to dental school. As opposed to a student who's scrambling around their third or fourth year, trying to find a recommender to write them a letter of recommendation for dental school, and you email them, oh, can you write me a letter of rec? And the professor's like, who? Oh! And doing so, having opened that conversation, them getting to know you and you getting to know them, they'll know you. 
and they'll know you want to apply to dental school and they'll be willing to write you a strong letter of recommendation, especially if you did well in the class. Now, if you're, if you're in undergrad and you're struggling in any of your classes, then you need to do things. You need to be proactive. You need to make sure to access outside of class materials like Khan Academy, YouTube, a YouTube channel that I used in undergrad and actually for studying for the DAT as well was Crash Course. They have great videos with playlists from different body systems to different cellular biology topics and stuff like that. So it's something really good to do to pair your coursework with online resources. Not only that, look into one-on-one -on -one resources for tutoring as well. There's a bunch offered online. There's also a bunch of stuff that you can even do on campus. Now, if you're already in undergrad and you've taken the bios, the chems, the physics, and all of those classes that are needed to apply to dental school, this is the time you need to self-evaluate yourself. You need to look at your performance in these classes and honestly, compare them to the statistics that are well documented in a very good resource from the ADEA. The ADEA, Official Guide to Dental School. I'll have the link down in the description for this book. And in this book, it has all the information you could possibly need. It has the demographic statistics in terms of the male to female ratio. It has the statistics in terms of in-state, out-of-state for certain schools. Actually, sorry, every school. It also has the prerequisite requirements. However, I would advise to keep checking the websites for these schools because they keep updating that information and requiring new classes, taking some out, stuff like that. It also has the cost of tuition for the school, which is a very big, to, very big factor. Another thing that the ADEA official guide to dental school has inside is not just the averages, but the ranges of DAT scores and cumulative GPAs and science GPAs for each school. So that's how you can self-evaluate yourself in terms of where do you fall on the spectrum to make a better decision on how to move forward. So definitely look at that book and self-evaluate yourself and see where you fall. If you feel like your GPA is lacking and you feel like you're not a strong applicant, then this is when I would highly advise any undergraduate student before they graduate to take some upper level division science coursework. This would look great on your application, especially if you do well in them. So some of them might include endocrinology, human physiology, anatomy, evolutionary biology, classes like that. And I would actually highly advise you to reach out to the advisors and admission directors of dental schools and ask them which classes do they recommend outside of the ones that I just recommended for you to take so that you can pad up your GPA as much as possible before you graduate. Now, this is targeted for students that are nearing the completion of their undergrad or they already finished. Let's say you've taken all those upper division science courses already and you graduated and you're still not competitive. Then what I would recommend for you is two things. One could be to go back to that undergrad and explain to them that you need to take more classes. It's gonna be a way for you to keep being involved in science courses and improving your GPA, your undergraduate GPA specifically. And so this would allow you to become a post bachelorate student at your undergrad. So you would still be taking undergraduate courses, but you'd be doing it after having graduated from undergrad. So then it would factor into your cumulative GPA. But let's say that even after that, you're not where you need to be. This is when I would recommend students to apply to master's programs, but you have to do it strategically. Don't just apply to a master's and be like, hopefully I'll get in. You need to apply to master's programs specifically designed for pre-health professionals like medical school, dental school, pharmacy school, optometry school. And you want to make sure to apply to the ones that have statistics. The reason why I chose Case Western was because they had one of the highest matriculation statistics for people in the program going into dental school. And this advice that I've been giving in terms of post back before or after graduating is exactly what I did. I knew that I wasn't competitive, so I went back after I graduated to my undergrad at University of Houston. I took some of those upper division science courses. And then after that, to put the cherry on top, I enrolled in that master's. So after 
having applied to dental school during undergrad and not getting in the first time, that's when I made this shift and after graduating decided to do the post back and the master's. So after I finished the first semester of my master's, my second dental school application was ongoing. So after I finished that semester in December, during the transcript update period of my ADSAS application, I submitted my grades for the master's. So before December, no school had any grades for the master's. They just saw in my application that I'm taking these classes, I'm in the master's, and I think that's why I didn't get any interviews before, de before December. But after December, literally after the second week, I got my first interview. So it is a really good thing to do if it's something that you really feel like that you need that extra push, you need an extra drive. You definitely want to apply to a master's and do well. That's very important. Make sure to do well. Because if you go into these master's programs and you don't do well, it just looks so bad. So you really want to make sure to do the best you can. Another element of the application would be the personal statement. The personal statement is something that can be pretty challenging um, because it's just so broad. The question is, why dental school? What interests you in dentistry? Why do you want to be a dentist, right? But it gets students, and including myself, I was really lost in terms of how to even go about it. So a friend of mine in undergrad actually recommended a method, and it was to, on a sheet of paper, you can type it or write it, whatever you're comfortable with, and that is to write bullet points of experiences you've, of things you've experienced, any uh, story, any life lesson, any anything that you think would be important to mention in a personal statement. After you have about, I would say, 15 to 20 bullet points, build upon those bullet points and write about three to four sentences for each of them. Having done that, it'll give you a really good skeletal framework in terms of knowing what you should put in your personal statement. And then after picking and choosing what those things are, you can kind of help flow them together in your personal statement as you build upon everything moving forward. Yeah, definitely get your personal statement read by as many people as you can. By your dentist, by people in dental school, maybe your professors, your parents, your significant other, just anyone. Anyone you think would give you really good, unbiased, positive feedback. And take it and literally just because whenever you're reading your own personal statement you think oh yeah that's good it's perfect but like you're reading it you wrote it so of course you think it's good so get some other eyes to look at it and if you guys need help maybe uh having your personal statements read let me know just send them to me email them to me my email address is right here go ahead and email anything if you have any questions about applying to dental school personal statement questions um, if, you, if you're in the self-reflection portion of your time in undergrad and you're evaluating yourself and you don't know where you're at, if you need help, just let me know. This is what this channel is for. This channel is here for anyone applying to dental school, anyone that has any questions or anything. So as you all noticed, there is one element of the application to dental school that I have not tackled, and that is the dental admission test. And the reason for that is because I want to make a separate video for it in which I explain exactly how I went about it, how I scheduled everything for each section, what resources I used, not just saying, oh, I use this, but how did I use it? When did I use it? And everything that goes into the application. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. It's my first YouTube video. I wanna make sure that each video is better than the prior one and I just want to help people out and let me know what you think. Send it to your friends, send it to your family, send it to anyone interested in applying to dental school and see you in the next one. Peace.